five tips for modern task management. These are my opinion, but it's five things that I do on a regular basis that help me stay ahead when it comes to unscheduled tasks as well as scheduled tasks and how I use the technology to support this process, not how I am using a specific tool. I mean, I'll talk about specific tools, but let's just talk about the five things that I do. The first is plan with one calendar and one calendar only. Even if you have more than one calendar, which in my case, I do. I, I have a simple case. I've gotten myself down to just two calendars. And in my two calendars, one of the views that I rarely use or rely on I should say. I use it all the time, but I rarely rely on it, is this calendar overlay view. So what you'll notice is that you see Matthew at Able Blue and you see Matthew at Aptalon. Well, I can undo this calendar overlay and see these calendars side by side, but this doesn't help me because outside of Outlook on the desktop, I would have to configure every one of my devices to be able to use this view. I would also have to configure every one of my assistance devices so that when she's looking at my calendar, she's seeing this consolidated view. And it's just, it becomes too cumbersome and I'm too worried about it. The other thing is I use FreeBusy.io and FreeBusy.io allows you to enter the name of your calendar that you want to use for other people to schedule time with you. And that only supports a single calendar. So for all of those reasons, I use a primary calendar, which is my Matthew at April Blue calendar. Then what I do is I have an inbox rule. So you'll notice that there are duplicated meetings here, office planning and strategic planning. This is because these events or these um, meetings came in on my a Aptalon calendar and they were immediately transferred to my Able Blue calendar via an inbox rule. So the inbox rule is actually quite simple. The rule simply says, whenever I get a new meeting invitation or an update, forward it to my Able Blue account. Simple as that. This is what it looks like in practice. The event shows up in my calendar because it was forwarded from my Aptalon calendar. And so the idea here is even though the uh, you'll notice the events kind of came in backwards, the green one is the Aptalon event, the blue one is my Able Blue calendar. So I haven't agreed to the event, so it's still in tentative mode, but it goes ahead and sends that invite over to my Able Blue calendar. So now I have a single calendar that is completely up to date. There is a little bit of back and forth that I have to do, but this works really well for keeping those two calendars in sync. I would simply go back to my inbox and I would go to Aptalon and I would choose the Aptalon event. I would accept that and then And on my calendar, I see I have both events selected. So this allows me to use just my Able Blue calendar as the official source of the truth for what my schedule really is. Now, there are a few other things I do on my calendar. I definitely use color coding, as you can tell. So for me, red is time where I'm working on or investing in the business. Yellow is a community event related to technology. So this would be a webinar that I'm giving. And then this off yellow color is a monthly recurring event for managing invoices and accounting. I just have that set up for the last four hours of the last day of every month. I also have other colors that I use like green for family time. This is my Thursday morning where I spend my time training my dog Ruby. 
And so I have all of this set aside so that not only do I know the colors, but also uh, my wife knows the colors and she has access to my calendar. So she can look across this, she can see the stuff that is possibly movable, like the red things, or not movable at all, like the blue and yellow things. My next tip is only track tasks with one task list. Find one that works for you and stick with it until you decide to move to another task list. But when you do, move completely to that other task list. My current favorite is Wonderlist. I know there's a new Microsoft-based task list that's coming out, but it currently doesn't do some of the things that Wonderlist does. And granted, Wonderlist doesn't do everything I need it to do either, but it does enough that I'm able to use it pretty successfully. It starts with an inbox. The inbox is where everything lands. And so when you have a new to-do to add, you simply click on the to-do list, you add that to-do, like uh, create and it goes into your inbox. At that point, you can open it and set reminders. You can add notes. You can build on that. But generally what I'll do is one of two things. I will either set a star, which means that it immediately goes into my starred items, which are the tasks that I'm going to act on immediately. And, or, I'll also move it to one of my lists. And so lists are a way for you to curate your tasks into what um, getting things done considers to be contexts. Okay. So for instance, I have a photography context, and this is things that are related to my passion for photography that I want to take care of. You'll notice that some of these are starred because I want to take care of them sooner than other things. But I haven't lost track of any of my work by using these lists. Uh, another good example is I have a Home Depot list. I'm not going to go to Home Depot today, but one of these days I will. And when I do, in addition to what I'm actually going there for, I have this long-term list of things that I want to get, get while I'm there so that I can have the peace of mind of knowing the next time I go to Home Depot, this is something I'm going to pick up. Now, there's also a very powerful feature of Wonderlist that I really like, which is called shared lists. And so shared lists allow me to work with other people outside my organization on shared tasks related to things like, uh, in this case, the search explained shared tasks is me and Agnes Molnar working together to create search articles, but she and I share tasks across that list. The other one that I really like is having tasks that recur. So I check in with my clients from time to time on a weekly basis, not necessarily every week, but if I've heard from them, then I can simply mark that as done and it will immediately regenerate itself for the next week. And so I know that I don't have to deal with that one, but I've got some people I'm going to touch base with today. So this allows me to have that recurring checklist of things that I want to make sure I get done. And then the task list manages that recurrence. So one task list to manage all of your tasks. The next tip is the one that I call how to sleep better. Write everything down. And I mean that more metaphorically than I mean physically. Because sometimes I'll just tap it into my phone so that I remember to do it. Where does it go? It goes into Wonderlist. But if I don't have that, then I write it on a napkin. I write it anywhere I can. Uh, I might send myself an email or I might use uh, Cortana or Siri to set up a reminder to remind myself to do something. And usually it's a reminder to write something down. That way I get it out of my head. I don't trust my memory anymore. And I don't worry about forgetting something. At different points during the day or during the week, I might collect all of those pieces and then plug them into Wonderlist. I might even sort them, but that's not even important. The important thing is get it out of your head, get it onto Wonderlist so that you don't have to worry about it anymore. This next tip I call take time to get things done. In other words, you've got to set aside time to get the things done that you don't have scheduled. 
For example, I have a lot of client meetings scheduled, but I also have a lot of things on my task list. So I've got to make sure that I plan for those things and get them done. And the way that I do that is a little cumbersome, I admit, but it works pretty well. I've tried using the Wonderlist calendar feature, but I just don't find that it works well enough for being driven out of a single calendar because it kind of adds a second calendar to your, um, to your libraries. So what I do is Monday mornings, I get my coffee, I feed my dog, she goes outside, she comes back inside, she sets up on the couch with me, and with my coffee in one hand, my computer on my lap, I sit with Ruby and I do the following. I simply look at the items that I have from the previous week that I starred. And if I accomplish them, then I get a, a nice little, little jolt that I complete them, and that's great. So for instance, I did touch base with Cal, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Of course, it comes back because it's part of the weekly check-in. So I know that I'm going to be talking to him later this week. It's only like 10 minutes. I'm not even going to worry about putting that on my calendar. But creating this video for tasks, that's going to take me a little bit of time. So at this point, it's starred, which means it's in my to-do list. So I'm simply going to go into Outlook, and I'm going to set aside time for writing up this video, which is going to take me about 90 minutes. So I'm simply going to do that. I'm going to go here, create a new appointment. This is an appointment for myself to... Finish the task video. I've already got the time in there. That's all good to go. I'll simply do that. Now this is something for the community. Um, so I'm gonna simply come in here and mark it for the, uh, the community and that gives, then I'm done, okay? So now I can stop worrying about that task because I know that Tuesday, I've set aside time to get that done. And I don't like that it's around noon, so let's just move it to 8.30. So that's starting to look good to me. I know that I've got some time in the afternoon. I know I've got to do invoices at the end of the week, okay? So all of the automation that I have set up here is good. I can look at my task list and say, okay, what else do I want to get done? Maybe I want to get this list to text file to thesaurus write-up done. So I'll simply come back in and do exactly the same thing. Find a little bit of time, like let's say Monday afternoon, and let's do that. So I'm just making time for myself. Now when somebody wants to check my calendar for availability this week, I don't have to stress that they're going to torpedo the plans that I already have for my current tasks. The other tip that's in this section of the blog post that I want to point out is you should also evaluate the tasks that you did not accomplish last week because there may be reasons why you didn't accomplish those tasks that you need to really review. For instance, maybe this April email flow task that I have here is just too daunting. It's too big a task, so I didn't even start it. So let's do um, gather requirements for email and start breaking that down into smaller subtasks because this I could knock out in half an hour and that's about a quarter of what I've got set aside for that whole project. So let's go ahead and add that to our calendar as well. But you get the idea. Decide why you're not being successful and then break those tasks down. Get them on your calendar. I call this last tip plan to get things done. This is where I kind of pull together how I deal with distraction as well as those things that will torpedo your current productivity. And when I talk about torpedoing your productivity, I'm talking about Outlook. I leave Outlook closed when I'm trying to stay in the flow and work on something specific because I don't want anyone um, stealing my attention from the work that I'm working on right now. But when I do choose to open Outlook, I simply go through and look at the items that are in there. Things that will take me just a few minutes to deal with, I deal with. But for instance, this note from Mary Jane about the Harlem Conference, that one I know is going to take me about a half an hour to read it, understand it, and then thoughtfully re respond to it. I don't have that half an hour right now. Now, some folks might use an inbox flag for this, and that's fine. You can use the inbox flag to get back, but it doesn't jive with what I've been telling you about using one calendar, because now you have flags to respond to as well as your calendars, as well as your task lists, and things start to fall apart. So this is what I do. 
I right click on the email, I drag it down here to the calendar, and then I let go and I choose copy here as appointment with attachment. So once I've done that, I don't have to worry about, I can just do this on the couch. The location doesn't even matter. I can also choose a time. And so if I look at my scheduling assistant, I can look at, you know, I can do this from 2.30 to 3 this afternoon. I'm actually kind of lucky. I don't have much going on this afternoon. So I can schedule that, save and close. And now I can forget about that email because I know that later on today, I'll be able to look at my calendar and I'll get a reminder that I have to follow up on that Harlem conference email. And the beauty of this is that the Harlem conference email is right here in my calendar. So it doesn't matter which device I'm on. I can always get back to the source of the requirement for that particular time that I'm going to spend working on this. Also, it blocks my calendar. So nobody is going to get in at 2.30 to 3 o'clock and jump on that distraction. So I know that I, I can just let it go. It's out of my head. I don't have to deal with it anymore. And this is one of the biggest tips that I can give you. This particular tip has saved me so much hassle because I know that I will follow up on all of this information as it comes in. So I can comfortably close down Outlook from time to time because there's nothing waiting, lurking in my inbox. It's all on my calendar. So there you have it. My approach, five tips using two tools to manage your scheduled and unscheduled tasks. Can you use Outlook task management? Sure you could. Could you use another task management system? Sure. All I'm showing you is that by using a single calendar and a single task list, you can get control of your life. You can get control of everything that's in your environment. And I, that's what helps me sleep at night. I hope you sleep well.